If you're like me, then you'll love, and I mean love, games. But games development... <laughs> Woo! Now that's something else. To make a game full of amazing content that everybody loves to play is not only a dream of mine, but a dream of many devs around the world. While playing your favourite game, you suddenly realise, I want that mechanic in my game. Grab your notepad, note it down, and set on your way to adding it. Until it's too complicated. Or is it me? You start questioning your abilities, and worst of all, burn out. Everybody wants to add mechanics that make their game more fun to play, but sometimes those same mechanics are quite difficult to build. More often than not, it's not a lack of skill, it's more the fact that we didn't slow down and fully break down the mechanic into its logical components, and if we did, we did it from the perspective of a player, strictly from the perspective of a player. Game developers lie. Okay, they don't lie unless a new console's coming out, but what does lie is the player's eyes. The way a player understands how a mechanic works is through what they see, and often and more often than not, what a player sees isn't enough to understand how the uh, systems in the game interlink in order to make that mechanic work. Balancing between the perspective of a player and a developer is a useful skill to have. You don't need to be an expert, only have enough understanding to be able to break down complex mechanics into smaller logical steps. That's not to say some mechanics aren't just hard to make, and there's never a right way to make a mechanic, there's definitely a more performant way to uh, make a mechanic, but there's never a right way. If you've stuck everything together with nothing but duct tape and paper clips and it's man and it's working, then celebrate the fact it's working. Unless it's running at five frames per second, celebrate then fix it, please. <laughs> Fix it. Da Fluffy Potato uploaded a great video called How to Code Almost Any Feature, a video that I wish I saw before I finished this one, because you know, it's basically this video. So if you'd like to watch that video too, which I recommend if you haven't already, click the link in the top or the bottom. Yeah. So what are some game mechanics that would benefit from being broken down apart from them all? From virtual reality to procedural animation, Let's have a look at some cheeky examples. There's no doubt that virtual reality is capable of providing incredible experiences of any genre. From the immersive world of Half-Life Alex and Echo, to the batshit crazy one of Boneworks. One thing that these games have in common is that they're physics based, allowing you to fling your arms about, knocking things over, screaming intensely at your newfound powers while your parents watch from the doorway, disappointed and terrified. They'll never understand. They'll never understand. How do your fancy new arms work? To a player, the hand models could just be attached to the controller's transform. Job's done, box it up, send it off to Valve, I'm going off to like work for Naughty Dog. See you in a bit. Bye! Gonna get a early copy of uh, The Last of Us 2. For more non-physics based games, that might be a perfect solution, but for games that are more physics based, um, well... Another issue that instead of colliding with objects, your hands will just phase through them. It's not a ghost game. Get on that. By breaking it down, what we could do is instead create a separate gain object to track players' controllers separately and have the hands as another move towards those tracked positions using physics. This would allow us to better track an IK rigid body with collisions handled properly by the physics engine. Does this mean you can grab objects 50 feet away when your hands are stuck in an elevator shaft? Yep. But we can handle that by limiting the interaction to only work when the hands are a certain distance away from the tracked controller object. Yeah, there you go. That was it. Go on. Piss off! Shaders are literally works of the wizarding world! They shouldn't work, and yet they do. Shaders unlock the ability to create some mind-blowing creations. Water, animations, curved worlds, point clouds. How do you even do- look at that! How do you even make that? How does that even work? 
Shaders are one of those things that seem impossible to pull off, but game engines now are making it way more accessible than it used to be through uh, packages such as Shadergraph in Unity. Node-based editors almost force you to slow down and break what you're trying to make into logical steps in order to will actually make what you're making. Not only does it force you to break it down, it also indirectly teaches you how shaders work and what shaders need to do in order to give the results that you'd see on like things like Reddit. The same goes for particle effects. They're just as crazy as shaders and when they work together, Boy, do they look quite nice. Another game dev called Randall has decided to make his own game engine for his game in which it simulates every single particle in it like a fucking crazy person. If that's something you're interested in, click the link above or below, and when you do that, tell him Jack sent you. He'll be all like, ah, nice, mate. Kangahoo? <laughs> When features commonly feared uh, like these are broken down into more logical steps, uh, complex systems and techniques slowly become more uh, understandable and less impossible to achieve. Have you ever noticed characters in games pick up ammo or items in an animation with such precision it seems impossible to account for while making the animation? This is done using procedural animation, a way of altering an animation at runtime using code. Games are able to take a base animation and make them more contextual with additional information. For example, a handshake Wow! For example, a handshake animation could change the position of the hand to a specific target, in this case would be the recipient's hand. To a player who didn't know any better, this might just be one of many animations. They might even think that they had to make one animation for every single little situation that the player could possibly get themselves into. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that? Like, one animation for chicken nuggies in front of you, chicken nuggies behind you, and oh, and those chicken nuggies from the ass of the chicken! By providing additional logic to animations, they can change based on the context given to them and reduce the amount of work needed to create them. But how even do you even do that even? That sounds like some... Fifth year Harry Potter shit, like taught by Professor Inverse in it's called it's called inverse kinematics. Inverse kinematics. Ah, now this is a technique that you can use to impress your crush. Ah, imagine all the possibilities. This can be used to calculate the location and rotation of a point based on those variables of an endpoint. Think of a massive jacked robot arm you know what i mean you know the one i mean the one from your dreams now the location and rotation of the elbow is based on the position and rotation of the of the hand give it a go great you look like a twat in some of your favorite games a character's legs actually bend and extend to match the floor below them and that can be done with inverse kinematics but how would you even go about doing that well an option would be to use ray casts just plug the information from that ray cast into your inverse kinematics code and you've got yourself some bendy knees <laughs> Even Horizon Zero Dawn uses her ray casts in order to place Alloy's feet on the ground during her traversal animation set. This game in particular even makes use of a spherical ray cast at the end point of that first ray in the event the floor is not directly below the first ray. That way they can still catch a floor in the event that there isn't one below Alloy's right foot. And you can see that happening in this video right here, link above and below. But Jack, I read on a forum that ray casts are expensive. Yeah, if you're being a twat about it. Yes, raycasts can be expensive, but too many people stop using them because they saw that bit of information on a forum. Yes, you can use them, but use them smartly because they, they, they are, they can be expensive, but only if you're using like 6,000 in one frame. Don't do that. Just be smart about it. Like this video based on procedural animation link above and below sometimes there will be certain game mechanics that you that you come up with or that you borrow from other games that are just difficult to make it's fine it's completely normal hard mechanics are just hard to make it's not like it's just suddenly going to be easy just because you broke them down but because you broke them down you'll then be able to know what areas of that mechanic you need to research which is equally as 
valuable as breaking it down. What does help though is having knowledge of object oriented principles or like some patterns to help you like cleanly break down uh, the logical steps that you need to break down. Trust me, you'll thank yourself later on. Don't not implement a mechanic just because it's difficult. Maybe try a different way or if you just can't, know when to stop and when to move on. And definitely don't burn yourself out over it because that's the number one rule in anything. Mental health comes first. If it takes an entire team of developers for a game studio to develop a game over years, you should find comfort in that in how long it takes you to develop any mechanic for your game solo. It's not a race or a competition never compare yourself. So before you try coding your next feature, try breaking it down into logical steps and go make some great games.